In the weeks leading up to last year's Sochi Winter Olympics, Bodie Miller was poised to become the most decorated male skier in American history. But two weeks earlier, he crashed out at the World Cup at St. Moritz. Take a look. Keep an eye on his left side. Watch his left ski. He just dives. He falls on his inside ski. Gets twisted around. That is a hard fall at high speed. Uh, this close to the Olympics. Let's hope he's all right. Miraculously, Bodie walked away. But imagine if instead he went to the emergency room. Then the story might have gone like this. CAT scan of the abdomen is done to be sure that the fall didn't injure Bodhi's spleen, his left side. And that's OK, but the scan shows two unexpected abnormalities, a spot on the lung and a lump on the kidney. And they trigger more tests. For the kidney, an MRI thankfully shows a benign finding. A CAT scan of the chest for that lung spot shows that it's probably OK. But this scan now shows a third unexpected abnormality, a thyroid lump. And it triggers three more tests, an endocrinology consult, a thyroid ultrasound, and a biopsy. All told, Bodhi undergoes a cascade of six tests and procedures, even though he is entirely without symptoms. And the unexpected findings are unlikely ever to cause a problem. It's time consuming incredibly anxiety provoking. His competitors are still on the slopes. This derails Bodhi. That cost him his medal. Fortunately, it's not so. Bodhi medaled. But this cascade of testing triggered by unexpected abnormalities is typical in the US today. I'm a radiologist who would like to introduce you to the dilemma posed by unexpected abnormalities on medical imaging exams. Why should you care? Because only a tiny minority, less than 1%, are significant. But overall, pursuing them is harmful and very costly to the tune of $200 billion a year. Importantly, this would not have affected Olympian Phil Mayer when he won the gold in Sarajevo in 1984, even if he'd suffered the same fall because he skied in the radiology dark ages. In the decades between Sarajevo and Sochi, the volume of unexpected abnormalities has exploded. We order more scans. Last year, 80 million CAT scans, up from 3 million in 1980. And technology enables us to see much more. When I was a young radiologist, one abdominal CAT scan had about 50 images such as this. Now, one scan has 300 to 3,000 much finer images, such as this. I review more images on one patient's scan than I did in three full days of work back then. Technology enables us to see more, and that's a benefit, but that, less obviously, is the problem. What should we do? Do we watch and wait? Do we test and treat? That is the dilemma of incidentalomas. It's a new word which adds to incidental the suffix oma, meaning tumor. And it refers to unexpected abnormalities on medical imaging studies ordered for an unrelated reason and whose treatment may cause harm. You may never have heard of incidentalomas, but it's so common and it's so big a problem, it's earned itself a Wikipedia entry. And it is so bad a problem that the president has charged a special bioethics commission to address them, a commission chaired by none other than the University of Pennsylvania's esteemed president, Dr. Gutman. And they increase as we age, so that in my work at the Connecticut VA affiliated with Yale Medical School, I easily see two to three on every scan. I never see a normal patient. And that is how this became an interest. Some of our dedicated physicians, frustrated by the moral and the legal obligation to chase incidentalomas, even when they believe it is not in their patient's interest, have asked me and other radiologists, please do something. Now, you may be thinking, what's the problem? Your tumors got found. You got treated before you got worse. You're lucky. You've dodged a bullet. Not usually. Overall, our testing is not improving your quality of life 
or your life expectancy. But we are wasting your time and money, causing anxiety, sometimes terrible side effects. And it is unbelievably expensive. In 2011, incidental lomas were estimated to cost as much as $226 billion. That was one quarter of that year's entire health care budget, entire defense budget, double the education budget. Now, the problem might be solved if we radiologists could distinguish between the insignificant and the bad, but largely we can't. And so our radiology reports often say, probably nothing significant, but cannot exclude malignancy. Think about that. Almost certainly nothing, but there's a very small chance it's cancer. This sets everyone into a tizzy. You and your doctors are now forced to contend with information you hadn't sought, but which you find impossible to ignore. What's the right thing to do? Statistics say that watching and waiting, even if it might be a little bit uncomfortable, is a very good bet. Usually, we do much, much more. Why? First, we have a profound aversion to uncertainty. We seek certainty. Second, we'd rather test and treat than watch and wait. Physicians who advise observation when it's appropriate get lower ratings and are more likely to be sued. Third, and this is important, we believe mistakenly that we owe our lives to these tests. In fact, except for colon, cervical, and possibly lung cancer, early detection has not reduced the death rate in patients without symptoms or risk factors. The good results following the treatment of a low-risk incidentaloma more often occur because the good result was already very likely. You come in with something that's not a problem. You go out with something that's not a problem. Family and friends hear a survivor's story. So in summary, we seek certainty. We'd rather test than observe. We believe incorrectly that these tests are life-saving. I see it daily. Take Bob. Bob is a 60-year-old professional who has unexpected low-risk tumors on each kidney after an unrelated test, an ultrasound of his aorta. Predictably, this triggers a cascade of tests. He has a urology consult, MRIs, biopsies, right and then left-sided surgeries, which sideline him for a year. It's a turbocharged incidentaloma ordeal. Bob's non-threatening tumors could have been watched, but he's grateful. He's grateful even though a decade earlier, prostate surgery for a tumor which could have been watched left him impotent and incontinent, just as he divorced and entered the dating world. Bob is less a survivor then he is a victim of overtreatment. Yet he told me, I celebrated each unexpected life-saving discovery. But that is an illusion, just as this is an illusion. These are false alarms. But Bob's narrative, which is typical, is the narrative which drives others to do the same thing. Now, there is momentum in favor of restraint. Increasingly, the medical literature and the lay press are reporting the dangers of incidentalomas. US News has said that is a reason to think twice, think twice before getting a CAT scan. A National Cancer Institute panel has said, stop calling low-risk lesions cancer. That label causes anxiety, and it compels needlessly aggressive treatment. Um, the chief of cardiovascular medicine at a Harvard hospital has written that incidental lomas may be better left untreated. And a number of prominent physicians, including Gilbert Welch at Dartmouth and the Vermont VA, have argued that the treatment of incidental lomas causes more harm than good and have gone further, challenging the conventional wisdom that early detection and more medicine improve our health. Just last month, Consumer Reports 
ran an article alerting its readers to the dangers of incidental omas right next to its long-awaited update on vacuum cleaners. <laughs> Nearly half of primary care physicians believe that their own patients are receiving too much medical care. And some have asked radiologists, including myself, please review and report only the portion of the exam about which I've asked. Can't you block out the rest of it? Can't you pretend you don't see it? But we, too, are morally and legally bound, of course, to report all significant medical information. So what can we do? I, I have a few suggestions. One, we can raise awareness. That's why I wanted to speak to you. We can promote that Presidential Commission's recommendation, anticipate and communicate. That is, before testing, prepare patients so they're not blindsided. With support, physicians and patients can become comfortable with watchful waiting. Two, research. The American College of Radiology is earnestly pursuing statistically-based management guidelines, organ by organ, including less aggressive treatment when that's appropriate. Also underway, but more challenging, are efforts to predict which few tumors will behave aggressively and to tailor cancer treatment to each tumor's unique genetics. Third, you can develop a healthy skepticism. Curb your enthusiasm for optional testing. Ask critical questions. Now, I realize that this is an uphill climb. Okay? On scale, we all see the problem. But when our loved one's affected, the good odds aren't enough. We're scared. We want certainty. I know this personally. My husband once had a tiny, tiny mole on his big toe. Two years ago, he saw a dermatologist. I'll call him Dr. Smith for something unrelated, a rash. And Dr. Smith incidentally noticed and biopsied that tiny mole. Now, we knew it hadn't changed in decades. Went about our business, weren't worried. A week later, we're fully engrossed in one of our son's wrestling tournaments. That mole is the last thing on our minds. When Dr. Smith calls, startles us with a call that the mole requires surgery, which he's scheduled. And my husband, already a skeptic, Googles this and shares with Dr. Smith the recommendation from the National Cancer Institute that this type of mole should simply be watched. But Dr. Smith insists. He balks. He's preparing a certified letter to mail to our home when I become anxious. I start to imagine how I'll feel if we hadn't done everything when we could have and the result's bad. And I cajole my husband. I need you to be here for me and the kids until he relents. Just this once, he says, for you and never again. Now, this is before of course, I became a small voice against over-anxious medical decision-making. Now I'd let him keep his little mole. So as you leave here today, please understand, I am not suggesting that you forego all further treatments. Rather, I suggest that you rethink the emotional reflex to do everything always. Ask critical questions. Seek a second opinion from your clinician and your radiologist. Understand that watchful waiting may be your wisest and your safest choice for your health and well-being. Thank you very much for the opportunity to share.